Action. Good morning, good morning. Hey, good morning. It's Dr. Leaves. Nope. Hey, welcome to Prelude to Ulysses. This is... This is Prelude to Ulysses. We're probably going to change that. This is Alex Reed's Littler Things. Or today we're going to be reading a selection out of You Better Be Lightning. Poetry by Andrea Gibson. It's going to be called The Night Shift. I work the night shift a lot. For those just listening, I'm not urinating. I'm pouring a cup of coffee. I would not urinate on camera unless I was paid more than this. It smells like bacon. I got an extra creamy one today. I'll give that coffee a 10 out of 10. Mm, no, more like 7 out of 10. 7 out of 15. It's got a bad aftertaste. Okay, you guys ready? <clears throat> you better be lighting. Das instrument world gespelt. In dem es in herdand hand gel hatten zweischen die lippen genomen word. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually the instruction manual for a harmonica. That's interesting. I didn't know it. Oh. You're supposed to read these before you play the harmonica. This instrument is held in the hand and is played by enclosing the channel openings with the lips. Let's see if I have a harmonica here. Is that one? No, that's shampoo from a gas station. <clears throat> oh, well, let's just read this book instead. The Night Shift by Andrea Gibson. Um, eight, out of, eight out of 12 now. They offer me the job on the spot, citing my previous work in construction, which I'd almost left off my resume, figuring jackhammers, drill bits, and wrenches are not tools one can use working at an at-risk at youth home for girls. There's a lot here falling apart, the house psychologist said. After the clothesline of a girl busts into our interview, after a clothesline of a girl busts into our interview and falls to the floor, tearing her baby blue press-on nails through the carpet, her mother missed visiting day for the third week in a row. Clothesline of a girl. High strung? Is that what that means? The creases of the girl's dress are ironed, are ironed so perfectly. I know that this week she was certain her mother would come. 
I'm in the darkest year of my 20s and applied for the night shift in an attempt to trick myself into believing that sleeping through the day was healthy. From 10 p.m. until 8 a.m., my job is to walk the hallways where the girls sleep and shine a tiny flashlight as softly as possible into each bunk every 20 minutes all night long. It is an invasion of privacy I can only stomach when recalling the kindness of the social worker's eyes when she walked me through my training. Many of these girls are not wanted by their families, and there are a few things that make it harder to want to stay alive. Mm. And there are few things that make it harder to want to stay alive, she said, removing an item I had never considered someone could hurt themselves with from a girl's closet. It was only one item on a long list of things I am being paid to memorize and will spend the years ahead of me trying to forget. The more I know the girls, the harder the job becomes. Bracing for the blood of a stranger is one hell, but the terror is multiplied by every bitten nail, by my every bitten nail, when that stranger is a girl who has told me all her life stories, except for the one I heard in the staff meeting and could not believe any human could live through. For years to come, nothing will have the potential to devastate me more than listening to a child try to make her life sound easier than it is. A month into the job, I can't look at any of the girls without seeing my baby sister's face. The first time someone hurt her on purpose. It wasn't my sister's grief so much as her shock. That stuck with me. None of these girls are shocked by the hurt that hunts them. They expect the, they expect the blade of this life to keep cutting and ask it to whittle them into something, someone too sharp to touch. I'm never in my life known as a relief. I've never in my life known a relief like the one that finds me the instant their alarms start screaming in the morning. <clears throat> it's the sound of teenagers having lived through the night. I make a pot of coffee and listen to them punch their snooze buttons until they file into the office to oh, excuse me, sign out pink razors one at a time. Jenny is always up first. My job is to stand outside the closed bathroom door and request a voice check-in every two minutes. She would hate me for this if how much I despise doing it was any less clear. Showers are for peace, not for you being reminded you can't be trusted. Not to bury yourself in six feet of dirt. While getting yourself clean, I've had... While getting yourself clean. I've had many jobs before this and will have many after, but this is where I learn one of my most vital lessons. If your own story is one you aren't sure you can survive, remove what sharpness you can from another person's life. What does that mean? Your own story is one. Remove whatever sharpness you can. I don't know what that means. Two minutes have passed. Jenny, check in with me, I say, checking my watch outside the bathroom door. Whatever song she was singing went silent. And all I can hear is the water slapping the drain. Two minutes and 30 seconds have passed. Jenny, check in time. I say again, moving my ear closer. Toward the door and feeling my pulse begin to knock its way out of my chest. Three minutes have passed. Jenny, check in. It's okay, Andrea, she says. Just or I'm okay, Andrea, she says, just as my hand reaches for the knob. Don't do that again or I'll kill you, I yell. Jenny laughs. The line of girls behind me in the hallway laughs with her. Then Jenny starts singing again. And after some time... I do too.
poem, wasn't it? Um, mm, I don't know how to deal with anything. Can't relate, except for to the abysmal nature of it, or maybe there's joy. Maybe there's joy there at the end where everyone's laughing together. People want to laugh at themselves. People want to laugh at everything. I try to laugh at all sorts of things, especially when I'm feeling incredibly depressed. It's more than a defense mechanism. It's a superpower, I think, to be able to, I don't know, breathe differently. <sighs> By laughing, I guess. I don't know. It's a tough one. Thank you. 
Keeps on ending badly, doesn't it? <laughs> Not if you laugh at the end. I don't know. What's the point? What's the point of anything? Who fucking knows? <sighs> Bye.